Nobody find a hearing aid in here this week, did he? Not that I heard of, but the best way to improve I, your I, videos I with music from Epidemic Yeah. Get the safest oh God. music subscription for content creators. Have, huh? Have you asked in? Have you asked in? Yes, I asked her. She said she hadn't seen nobody. Had nobody turned one in. And it, uh, so, it, uh, oh well. The only other one I'd say is if you see Dale. Yeah. If you're a homeowner in Virginia, and I know he's been up cleaning, so he might have. <laughs> yeah, he you'd you'd well think he'd notice it when he was sleeping. If it, it'd probably go flying Most a little bit. Don't yeah. know this, but in 2005, the federal government passed the yeah, Energy it, Policy turn, Act. This. This I tell you, it's not supposed to be this cold May 30th, is it? Yeah. Thousands of dollars to invest in upgrading their homes with solar. This is why we've seen so many Get somebody to help her next Sunday to take up the the money and county. This program won't be around for us, and it's on a first come first serve. Coming back on so, mm -hmm. if you want to see exactly how was Craig Springs? It was solar great. Here, Good. It was I want great. you to click the little blue button below to see the I had to do was go inside. Once you complete the quiz, you'll instantly <laughs> but, uh, know your chances of getting paid to go nice. solar. It was nice. I left the door open nighttime uh, Thursday night. Homeowners who make the switch to solar are saving up to 50% off their electricity. Oh gosh, yeah. Federal and state insurance. Trying to get down in there for the yeah. Did you hear they've come out with a new master plan there? Uh, a three phase master plan. They're going to try to get the Oaks, the Oak Lodge, to to where it is nice enough. That people want to come up there in the year round. The last stage, they they want to rebuild a hotel up there, like the Jefferson had. So they got a big old plan for it. I don't know. It sounds it sounds exciting if they can get it done. Yeah. They were experiment, experimenting with a new riding lawnmower, uh, <laughs> zero turn that's got a steering wheel on it. Ooh. Don't have the handle. Mm -hmm. It's got a steering wheel on it. And uh, so uh, they, they said the store on it was it was a used one. The man was selling it for a family. Mm -hmm. The man that owned it, he and his wife had a fall and everything. He killed it. Oh, my God. So the family's trying to sell that long yeah. ball, you know, just for whatever they yeah, get out of it. absolutely. And, uh, so they, they're tested with it, and if it works out, they're going to buy it. And Good. Uh, so it, uh, they have to cut down the man that was cutting the grass. He ducked out, so now they're stuck with all that grass cut. <laughs>
thought we knew the plan. We thought we knew how to do church. And then everything changed. But we are the church. We are the people of hope. We trust God and know that change is good, that death leads to resurrection, that God makes all things new. As God told Jeremiah, surely I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for harm, plans to give you a future filled with hope. And so we dream of a church that's bold, courageous, impactful, anti-racist, no fear, no limits. We see church the new way, reaching more people, preaching good news, fighting brave battles, caring for creation, being the hands and feet of God, and welcoming all to the table. This is your church. This is church the new way. Be the new church. Be bold, be courageous, be limitless, be generous. Be the new church. Your gift to the Pentecost offering builds a future of hope in your region and across the Christian church, Disciples of Christ. Please give generously. Please join me in the opening responsive reading. Your young will see visions. All people will prophesy. Good morning on this Memorial Day weekend. It's good to see everybody. Memorial Day is the weekend that we celebrate and remember all those service members, both male and female, that have given their lives for our freedom. And this reminds me so much of Jesus Christ giving his life for our freedom, for our eternal freedom. If you'll pray with me, Heavenly Father, on this Memorial Day, we pray for those who courageously laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. May the example of their sacrifice inspire us in the selfless love of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the families of our fallen troops and fill their homes and their lives with your strength and peace. Embolden us to answer the call to work for peace and justice and seek an end to violence and conflict around the globe. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy word be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning again. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to go over some of the announcements. Uh, I think they're playing on the screen as well. You'll notice that uh, there'll be no Facebook Live on Monday, um, but on Tuesday through Thursday, there will be Facebook Live. And I'd like to remind everybody that Ben and his family are moving on Wednesday. And he still intends to do Facebook Live, uh, which is mighty brave, I think. <laughs> but, but be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but uh, be prepared for an announcement if, if that doesn't happen, um, that uh, the move may take precedence over that <laughs> as well. And we wish him luck with his move. That's great. Um, and you see also we have the uh, Bible studies and prayer groups still scheduled um, on those days. Are there any other announcements? All right, uh, I guess we can proceed into the uh, uh, prayer song. Yeah. 
gentleness flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes. From the bondage of sorrow, the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind wind on the sea. Well, hopefully it won't be too, too long until we uh, can sing out loud <laughs> with this song. Um, our prayer uh, concerns list is in the bulk uh, in the bulletin, uh, but I'd like to uh, go over the acute prayer list. Um, if Kim and Danny Brooks, Jim Lacey, Joyce Sneed, Dana Kidd, who's Don Rezai's sister, Randy Parrish, a friend of Ken Beecraft, John Vassery, and Ray Lynn, Amy Maddox's daughter, born April 28th. And then the ongoing prayer Prayer list, uh, Joanne Cole, who's here today and played for us. Uh, Wanda Garner, Walker Hill, Mark Maslow, Kim Miller, Hazel Palmer, Bree Green, who's uh, Jim, Kay and Jimmy Green's granddaughter, Karen Hartless, the daughter-in-law of Kay Hartless, Joni Campbell, friend of Teresa Graham, Nancy Moore, niece of Glenn Shrewsbury, Carolyn Miller, Nancy Kendrick's sister. Judy Thompson, that's the sister-in-law of Jackie Maddox and Bev Maslow. Vicki Willis, a mother of Carla Jones' good friend, Nikki Willis. Becky Truxell, Ken Truxell's mother. Jean Caskey, sister of Carol Amos. And Tristan, son of Bill Spangler Dunning, our regional minister. Are there any others today? you pray with me. Dear God, we confess our need for you today. We need your healing and your grace. We need hope restored. We need to be reminded that you work on behalf of those you love constantly, powerfully, completely. Forgive us for trying to fix our situations all on our own. Forgive us for running in different directions and spinning our wheels to find help, when true help and healing must be found first in you. Forgive us for forgetting how much we need you above everyone and everything else. We come to you and bring you the places we are hurting. You see where no one else is able to fully see or understand. You know the pain we've carried, the burdens, the cares. You know where we need to be set free. We ask for your healing and grace to cover every broken place, every wound, every heartache. Thank you that you are able to do that more than we could ever imagine. Thank you for your mighty power that acts on behalf of our children. We reach out to you and know that you are restoring and redeeming every place of difficulty, every battle for your greater glory. We love you. We need you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
have scripture today. Uh, the first one is from the Gospel of John, 3 verses 1 through 17, from the Common English Bible. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could do these miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, How is it possible for an adult to be born? It's impossible to enter a mother's womb for a second time and be born, isn't it? Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised that I said to you, you must be born anew. God's Spirit blows wherever it wishes. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. It's the same with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said, How are these things possible? Jesus answered, You are a teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? I assure you that we speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen, but you don't receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the human one. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but have eternal life. God didn't send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And also from Romans 8, 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation but it isn't an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. All who are led by God's Spirit are God's sons and daughters. You didn't receive a spirit of slavery to, be, to lead you back into fear, but you received a spirit that showed you are adopted as his children. With this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs and fellow heirs with Christ. If we really suffer with him so that we, may, we can also be glorified with him. May God add to my understanding this reading from his word. A few years ago, <clears throat> I, I decided that I was going to start doing my pastoral visits to the local nursing home by walking from the church building down to the nursing home. It wasn't a long walk, maybe a mile and a half or so, but it was on a busy road. It was actually on US 460 that looked very much like US 460 right here in front of the church, except there was a nice wide sidewalk. So I thought, it'll be nice. During the spring and fall when the weather's nice, I will just make that walk to go do visits at the nursing home. And so I did. For several days, we had a nice little run, and it was part of one of those times when I was trying to get in shape. Y'all ever have times like that? where you decide, oh, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be the thing that solves my problem. So I started doing the, the three-mile round trip walk a couple times a week and, and was really enjoying it. I, I was getting some energy out of it. I was going and doing the visits. 
The weather stayed nice for a little while. It was really nice. And one day I told Tammy what I had been doing, that I had been walking up and down the highway. Tammy said, I don't like that. I said, why? She said, that's dangerous. You can't just walk up and down the highway like that. And I said, now look, I'm, I'm not staying on the sidewalk. I'm not walking on the shoulder. It's safe. I promise everything's fine. And she was clearly still not happy with it, but she let it go. So I kept doing it a, a couple more times and told her, you know, I'm really, this is, I think this is going to work. I think this is going to be the time that I really get myself into shape. And she said, I still don't like you doing that. And, and I didn't understand. So I said, what? Why? She said, I'm afraid somebody's going to pull over and take you. I said, have you seen me? <laughs> who, who wants to take me, number one? I mean, other than you, I'm still thankful for that. But who looks at me walking down the side of the road and says, that's the guy I want to take on? <laughs> Six foot, 280 pounds. I think I can take him. Nobody's going to try to stop and take me. And she looked so utterly confused by the statement that I wasn't worried that someone would take me. And I was obviously pretty utterly confused that anyone would think that somebody might try to. And she finally said, well, you know, I'd never thought about it that way. But I'd never thought about it from her perspective. That as a young woman, walking down the highway is dangerous. Not just because the roads are, are dangerous, but because the people on the roads might see something that they can do. See an opportunity to do something wrong to somebody. We did not understand each other at all until we talked about it quite a bit. And finally, I got to see that word privilege in action. At six foot, 280 pounds, I had the privilege of not really worrying about anywhere I go or anything I do. Because most people don't have any interest in finding out whether or not I'm a softy, which, by the way, I am. So, as I was thinking about that story in this morning's scripture, I was thinking about the ways that our different perspectives really change how we see the world. And in this morning's scripture, Jesus says you must be born anew, according to the Common English Bible, born again, according to some translations, born from above, according to others. And all three of those things mean something just a little bit different, maybe. But Jesus says something else in there that I think we have to make sure we don't deny. You must be born of the water and of spirit. Jesus is telling Nicodemus, you've got part of it, right? Yes, you need to be born. You need to be human. That's part of who we are. We have mothers and fathers. We have families. We have experiences that teach us about life. And in sharing experiences with each other, we can learn and grow and expand our perspectives. But we need the other part too. We need to be born from above. Born anew. Born again. Born of the Spirit. We need something that informs us that is greater than our experiences and our perspectives. We need something that can show us a new and different way because if we only live based off of our perspectives and our experiences, guess what the world will continue to look like? Exactly what it looks like now. Our perspectives and our experiences have led us to this point. And if we do not have the Spirit, the world will continue to look broken, divided, hurting and angry, violent and hateful. It is the spirit of love that takes us beyond our own experiences, our own perspectives, our own narrow vision to show us something more, something different, and a new way to live and move and have our being. That phrase born again, born anew, born from above. That's a phrase we don't use a whole lot in the disciples of Christ, right? We tend to raise, go through pastor's class, and get baptized. 
When I was in college, I mentioned to a professor who asked me what I was going to, what I was preparing to do, that I felt called to be a minister. And she looked at me and she said, "Oh, what's your born again date?" I thought. I said, "What?" She said, "What's your born again date?" And all I could think of was a gallon of milk expiring. Well, you know, what's, what's your sell by date? That was not a phrase that I was familiar with, having grown up in the Christian church, disciples of Christ. I could have told her the date I was baptized, the date I went through pastor's class. I could have told her what my life had been like and how Jesus had moved in it. But I didn't have the language of a born-again date. There are many people who do. I bet we've got a couple in here who maybe could say, this is the day I was born again. But we didn't have that common language. And sometimes we can get caught up on the language of our own experiences even with God, to the point that we make them exclusive. We make them narrow. And we say that if God has not moved in your life as God has moved in my life, then you don't really know God. I saw in this professor's eyes when I said, what's a born-again date? Questions. And I think those questions were, you don't even know what a born-again date is. How can you be a Christian, much less a minister? much less someone who leads people to God, someone who looked at me and said, I don't know about this. I don't think you have what it takes. Now, y'all might figure out in a few years that she was right. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. But it wasn't a matter of me not having the Spirit. It wasn't a matter of her not having the Spirit. It was a matter of a difference of perspectives. And the Spirit, when we are open to it, when we hold loosely to our experiences, to our backgrounds, not let them go all together, because God has been with us in our lives. We need to remember who we have been. Remember the places where God has shown up unexpectedly in our lives. Remember the things that we have been through. They have made us who we are. But we must hold loosely enough to them that God can show us another way, a new thing, so that the Spirit can actually guide us rather than our own base instincts. We can easily get caught up in that hurt me one time a long ago and so it will always hurt me. So I'm never going to do that again. I have a fear of crowds and zoos. I got lost at Washington National Zoo when I was two years old. I don't like being in crowds and I don't like going to zoos. It has nothing to do with the animals. The animals are incredible. I love that part. But especially now that I've got a son, I am going to hold his hand tight the whole time we are in the zoo because of that experience. But God can free me from that so that I can actually let my son experience the fullness of a trip to the zoo. I can be reminded that just because when I was two years old, I got lost, doesn't mean that I have to handcuff myself to Oliver so that he doesn't. Because when we handcuff ourselves to the things that hurt us in in the past, we are reintroducing ourselves to the slavery of sin. To saying, I won't let this happen again. When we say that, We keep ourselves from a new future, from a new opportunity, from a new life. And we keep ourselves from the wholeness of the guidance of the Spirit in our lives and in our church. I don't know all the experiences of Timberlake at this point, but in 50 years there have been times that have been wonderful, and there have been times that have not been so wonderful. And those stories we need to remember and tell them Not so that we can remember not to ever do that thing again because it didn't work then. But so that we can remember how it felt and allow God to heal the wounds and the fear from the bad times and allow God to use the good times to remind us of the hope of the new things that can and will happen with the guidance of the Spirit. Ken and I talked in February of 2020. It has been... 15 months since the first conversation Ken and I had. Bill Spangler Dunning had told me that 
he'd like me to have a conversation with Ken and consider a calling to Timberlake. And at the time, I didn't know what was going on because I wasn't even in search and call. But I said, if, the door, if there's a knock on the door, I may as well go check and see who it is. If it's the Holy Spirit, then come on in. And if it's something else, I can just say, okay, I'm not interested. So before I talked to Ken, Tammy and I got in the car with Oliver, and we actually drove up here. We got up on, on 460 and drove past the church and looked around and drove on into to Timberlake and, and saw what was going on. And I'll be honest, at that moment, it was a no. I did not sense God calling me. Tammy did not sense God calling us. The calling was not there in February of 2020. I don't know what happened between February of 2020 and May of 2021. But I know that God has called me here now. I know God has called us together. And I tell that story, it's a hard story because I don't understand it. It's a lot better story if Ken called me and we talked and it was just boom. Yes, everything. But that's not always the way God works. God has timing. And for whatever reason, Ken and I had a good conversation. He's a pretty good guy. Betty, you did well. But for whatever reason, at that point, God, said, God just said, not yet. Not now. Fifteen months later, I've never felt a clearer calling in my life. A clearer, yes, this is it. And I can't explain it. But that's the thing is... Nicodemus, when he's talking to Jesus, he wants to be able to explain it. He wants to know every single detail of what's going on. And it's why he can't understand. If something is beyond his fathoming, if something is beyond his understanding, it can't be real. It can't be true. But how small would God have to be for God to remain within our understanding for God to remain within our fathoming when the spirit moves and guides us it will be in ways that we cannot understand in ways that we don't fully get but we will know and there is a difference between understanding and knowing when it comes to the wisdom of the spirit it doesn't mean we can't ask questions it doesn't mean we can't claim our confusion it doesn't mean we can't even talk to God and maybe say I, really what's going on here but when we get that yes when we get that guidance when we get that answer after we talk about it we go and when the church of Jesus Christ hears the spirit of the Lord and goes it can change everything it can change our lives as individuals. It can change the life of our church. But even more than that, it will change the life of the community of which we are a part. There is no time in the Bible where the Holy Spirit moves in such a way that it is not for the good of all creation. Even when people didn't understand it. When people said, yes, I will go wherever God has called me, the world has been changed. And so the calling for each of us, and for us as a church as we go through this season of visions and dreams, is to listen for the Spirit. Not our own perspectives and preconceived understandings, not our own experiences, because we can just take a look around and see where that's led us. Deep misunderstanding and division and anger and hatred that we see throughout our society. But when we listen to the Spirit of God that sees all things and knows all things, the Spirit of love that brings about redemption for all things, for God so loved the world that He sent His only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. God did not send him. See, here's the thing. It doesn't end at John 3.16. It keeps going. God did not send him to judge the world, but to save it. It's for everything. 
when we listen to the guidance of the Spirit, when we are born from above, we will be a part of the redemption of all creation. We will be a part of life and love coming true in this world. We have to move beyond just our experiences. As Paul says, we must not be guided simply by our bodies. We must marry together what we have experienced and lived with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, which continues to move and make all things new. If we are born of the Spirit, that's our work, to make all things new. Amen. If there is anyone here today who would like to make a profession of faith in the one who was sent to save the world, we invite you to come forward and do so. If there's anyone who would like to join together with this body of Christ as we seek to bring about redemption for the world around us, we invite you to do so. And if there's anyone who would like to rededicate their life to Jesus Christ and to being born of the Spirit, we invite you to come forward and do so. As we listen to our communion hymn, we can hum along. Welcome back to the table. It's probably been at least a week since each of us have been back to the table. I kind of view this as a uh, a check-in station or a home base. Like, remember when you were kids and you got back to home base, you were safe. So so here we are back at the table. Uh, I hope this week you guys have felt the spirit and you've had good things and things that you want to bring back to the table that uh, we can get squared away again. Uh, I know this week I unexpectedly turned around and I saw a car on the other side of 29. I had to go a mile and I turned around and came back to see what was wrong. And when I walked up to the side of the car, it was a, a young girl that uh, wasn't six foot two eight. <laughs> she was probably five one and about about a hundred pounds. And she handed me her jack. So. So I, so I jacked her car up and got her tire changed and got her back on the road. And I'm, I know she felt good about it, but I, I felt better about it, I know. So uh, then on another occasion this week, I, I kind of showed myself with one of the employees that uh, I just had, had a disagreement with. And I kind of felt the spirit after that. And I called and apologized and said, yeah, that, that wasn't, wasn't the right thing to do. So... Uh, so we get to bring all these things back to the table and, and get renewed and, and receive the, uh, the gift that God has made available for us uh, by allowing his son to come and sacrifice his life that we could receive eternal life uh, someday. So 
Pray with me, please. Lord, we uh, thank you for this day. We thank you for this table. We thank you for the, the bread and the cup that represents your son's body and blood that, that was spilt on the cross that uh, enables us to bring our sins back and, and leave them here and, uh, and to receive that eternal life uh, someday. We just ask that you not only make that available to us, but help us to spread the word and, and make others aware of that gift that's available. Amen. For it was on the night that Christ was betrayed that during supper he took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat of it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it, and he poured it, saying, This is my blood the blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. Now we'll have our closing song. Joanne and Anna, I apologize. I got it out of order there. I was supposed to do the closing prayer first, but we can all make mistakes. God will be with us anyway. So if you'll please bow for our benediction. As you go forth from this place, know that the Spirit is with you, prepared to guide your steps, to teach your mouth the words of love and life. Go. Following where the Spirit leads. Amen.